This stream is for you guys, the people that saw this channel reference multiple times and are over here to find out what the hell this whole thing is about. And uh, I want to kind of talk to you, to you people, and I want to tell the world and you what anarcho-capitalism is actually about. And that's why I invited one of the most awesome people I know, Larkin, on the show to help me do it. There are hundreds of thousands of anarcho-capitalists. Would you agree with that estimate in the world, Larkin? Yeah. Now, absolutely. <laughs> and and they come in all types. There are people all over the world. You have New Hampshire, which is arguably one of the mo most successful um, areas in the world, uh, in the United States, trying to make freedom uh, ring, so to speak, when it comes to an anarcho-capitalism. You have um, other groups all over the country. Then you have all types of people. You've got the crunchy types that are you know into holistic medicine and you have the collegiate types that people like the Mises Institute. This is a, a think tank of, of collegiate or scholastic types that are working on things like the economics of liberty. Uh, you have philosophers that are trying to put together moral philosophies that uh, eliminate the coercion of things like the state. You have activists, you have charity workers, you have charity organizations like the one I started uh, called a voluntary virtue, where we try and help people in need without m making the government point guns at people to extract resources to do it, you know, against their consent. You have school teachers, entrepreneurs, you have a lot of like information, uh, IT people, information tech people. They're all over the world. They're in all walks of life. And I just wanted to kind of back up and make sure that we get that the people got the right scope on this. Yeah, I, I think there's sort of a tendency and I, I even and for years have hated I hate it when people refer to it as a, a movement. Mm. Um, and I, that's just sort of a pet peeve of mine, because I mean, you can sort of call it that it's a bunch of people, you know, all adopting a similar viewpoint on a particular thing. Um, but that sort of brings to mind like some sort of cult where this big group of people, they all like bow to one person and they all believe this, this set of writings and they all dress the same way and they talk the same way and they use the same and actual anarchism or voluntarism is literally just people figuring out that one thing in particular is really stupid. And what they believe about literally everything else is independent of that. Their, their priorities, their values, their preferences, their lifestyles, everything else. It's literally a bunch of people who figured out that government isn't legitimate, that it's not OK to rob people and boss them around, that it's not OK to use force against people who didn't harm or threaten anybody. And they just figured out that. So to me, in the long run, I think it's going to be just as silly as as people using a label to mean I'm someone who doesn't believe in Santa Claus. Oh, you're one of those non Santa Clausists. It's like, well, yeah, but I don't identify as that because that's just one stupid thing I don't believe in. There's 80 million things that my life is actually about that I like to do and you know, music, as you might be able to tell from the studio behind me, like a thousand people can be into a thousand different things. The thing that makes this that that makes this a community or whatever movement or whatever you want to call it is just that everybody in it figured out in one way or another. And a lot of people had different paths getting there that government is the enemy of humanity. There's that one big, horrible, violent, parasitic, destructive monster. And we figured out that thing isn't good. That thing is ev isn't ever good. It can't be good. That shouldn't exist. What's for dinner? <laughs> like everything else about our lives is still individual. It isn't like here's a set of complex teachings that we all bow to. It's sort of an obvious revelation that we've all come to and go, oh, yeah, that that can't be OK. Having a ruling class can't ever be legitimate. And that's all. That's the entire freaking <laughs> philosophy. And, and most of the people, while certainly tending to be more on the damage side, just because it's the people that are harmed by the state that are the first to wake up and realize, wait, where do they get the right to do these terrible things to me? And then they go looking yeah. and realize that they have no right. It, it's only it's only because those people are the ones that are on are, are receiving the stat the tip of that spear. They realize it first, yeah. but 
it's very normal everyday people. Um, like, <laughs> like I'm saying, entrepreneurs, collegiate types, philosophers, act like normal everyday activists, normal people. Like I, the vast majority of them, just you know, go to work and live their life and raise their family. Um, it is a world changing thing, though. It kind of changes how yeah. you go about every day of your life because everything around you is controlled and manipulated to some extent by the government. And so when you realize mm -hmm. that it has no just authority, it really changes how you interrelate with the world around you. Um, and maybe we can talk about some of that, but just maybe we back up and just do kind of a quick definition of terms for the people that are new here and are just stopping by. There's a difference between the, the commies, the, the uh, so-called anarchists, anarcho-communists, Antifa types out on the street throwing Molotov cocktails, destroying people's businesses and property and livelihood. The difference between that mess and anarcho-capitalists. And so maybe, why don't we just begin there? Like, let's define anarchism. Sure. There are anarcho-communists who, uh, are, a bunch of them are all bitter now because like, you can't call yourselves anarchists because we were the originals and first of all there isn't an original anything anarchy literally means rule by no one that's literally what the word means and so an anarchist is somebody who advocates that there not be a ruling class and that's all it's a pretty evil concept um the anarcho-communists like to just tack on all sorts of random things like and there can't be money or property or hierarchy or like just some random array of arbitrary garbage that they got from Marx or something. And they decide, well, we're going to jam that all into the definition of, of anarchism. It's like and force it on people and force it on people, which is the contradiction that, in terms. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's the ridiculous thing, because my whenever somebody identifies as an anarcho communist or anarcho socialist, my first question, sometimes my only question is, okay, if you choose to interact with people by having a commune and sharing everything and having nobody in charge of anything, um, first of all, I'm not going to mess with you if you do that. If other people want to do things differently, like they want to use medium of ex mediums of exchange and they want voluntary hierarchies and they want trade and they want things like that, are you going to leave them alone? Are you, like... In other words, is this communist thing just a thing you are choosing for yourself and like maybe you'd recommend other people do it, but you're not going to force it on others every once in a while, one will say, oh, yeah, that, that's just what I would do. And if you want to do the capitalist thing, go do it. And I'd say, OK, cool, we, we can get along fine. Um, even voluntarily, I don't think your ideas are going to work very well, but I'm not going to be there to like mess them up for you. you you'll you can mess them up on your own. <laughs> You can form your own bread lines. You don't need my help. <laughs> right. I'm not going to make you get into bread lines. Um, but the majority of supposed anarcho-communists I've talked to, they hardly ever come out and say, I'm going to force it on you. But they don't say no. They say, well, there needs to be like a, maybe a central committee that makes sure that everybody and, and I, it immediately occurs to me, do they not notice that they're describing a government? They're describing a centralized authoritarian monster that wants to force their preferences on everybody. Why are you pretending to be anarchists yeah. when you want a central committee? And, and if you look at the, the constitutions and the history of the Soviet Union and communist China um, and North Korea and other places, they used all the same terminology. We're going to have the people's committee that's for fairness and equality and yada, yada, yada. And my first and main question is, well, are you going to force that on people or just suggest that they do it? Because if you're going to force it on people, A, you're not moral and B, you're not an anarchist. And if you're not going to force it on people, OK, you can go do ideas that I think are dumb. And that's the beauty of anarchism. It yes. isn't one person saying, here are the ideas everyone must follow. You can do whatever you want if violent and a thousand people can or a thousand groups of people can try a thousand different ways to organize and arrange things and see what works instead of having one group of control freaks saying, no, we must all do it this way. So anarcho-capitalism says you do whatever you want if you're not messing with other people in their property. 
And anarcho-communists basically say, no, everybody has to be within this weird, bizarre, convoluted economic theory that doesn't actually make any sense anyway. Like, we can't even say what it is, but we're going to force it on all of you. Yeah, the, it, there's one rule. Like, <laughs> it's it's, a, it's not a like a super complicated, like, ideology, if you can even call it that. <laughs> it's that no one right. has the right to control you absent your consent and if you consent then it's not really control you're just a, a, a going along with your agreements that you have voluntarily made that's it that's it and yeah. uh anybody that tries to compliment uh, com complicate it and make it more difficult than that uh is going off on tangents now there is yeah. the thing though that they got to the word first and just imagine <laughs> just just imagine, like, if you're not an anarchist and you're watching this, just imagine, put yourself in our shoes for a moment and realize that we have come to an ideology whose name is anarchism, anarchy. We want no one to non-consensually control us. But unfortunately, a bunch of these commies got there first and everybody, like, to the point, to the point where the average person associates anarchy with, like, mayhem and Molotov chaos in the streets. Like yep. they have done that to the word and the word is the most beautiful thing almost of any of the words, no rulers, the absence of non-consensual yep. control over you. What an amazing, beautiful, precious concept that is. And for it to have been perverted into what everyone thinks it is today uh, is just a travesty. So I, I'm glad yeah. that we took a moment to just like call out once again, that difference. So, and the, Go ahead. The, if I could just throw in the weird dogma that you get with communism of like, well, there's no property ownership. Well, there might be personal property, but not private property. It's this big convoluted mess of garbage that, that you have to like memorize and agree with to be on their side. Whereas actual like <laughs> voluntarism, actual anarchy, if you just talk normal people through it, they agree with most of it to begin with. Like if you ask people like, what would you think about the idea of like government, instead of just stealing a bunch of your money and spending it on whatever the heck they want, what if you were allowed to decide which things you were going to fund? And maybe you say, I don't, I don't like anything they do with my money. I'm not giving them anything. And you'd be allowed to do that. Would you be okay with that? And everybody says, yeah, that would be nice. Like if there's some, if there's like a library or roads or something that I want to chip in for, and I want someone to do that, yeah, but yeah, I'm not too fond of paying for this. And, you know, there's different people want different things. But what they don't realize is what well, you just described anarchy, literally, because if you get to decide who you give your money to, to get services, whether it's fixing a road or even like protection or, you know, private security or whatever, that's not government anymore. Government by definition doesn't ask what you want it, it takes your money and spends it however it wants and it bosses you around and it controls your behavior and it makes you do stuff so when people are actually brought to it without this huge bias of oh is that like every man for himself and like violence in the streets and no it's literally like nobody gets to rule you and otherwise we just live our lives and we can cooperate and organize in a million different ways and when people are brought to it with an understanding of what's actually being suggested, what's being changed and what isn't being changed in the world that like you and I want to see, most people are like, oh, OK. And it's unfamiliar enough that often people have questions of, well, well how would this work and how would this work, which is fine. But it's not this big, weird list of cult beliefs like the <laughs> communists have that don't match reality, doesn't match our experience, doesn't match how economics works, doesn't match anything. You have to believe all this weird garbage from Karl Marx um, to be on our club. No, to be in our club, you have to like not initiate violence against. It's a pretty open club. That's the only requirement. You yeah. can believe in whatever else you want. Just don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so, okay. And so here's, here's where we come to anarcho-capitalism. And you just mentioned another term, voluntarism in there that we should probably also kind of talk about all these things together to clarify mm -hmm. all the names. It's kind of sucks that anarchism has been, uh, like I just said, has been turned into this scary, you know, chaos in the streets word. And so we've kind of had to find other terms just to, so we can tell people what we believe 
without triggering yeah. all those pent up stupid biases that they've been trained with. And in some cases, rightfully trained with, because like there's people calling themselves anarchists rioting in the streets and destroying people's property. Um, so yeah. other name, we have to come up with something else to call ourselves. We, and, uh, <laughs> and so there's several that have come up, right? First of all, this idea of anarchism, of no rulers, of you have, you own yourself. You have the sovereign right to control yourself unless you give consent to somebody else and work in agreement with them. That's it. This is the core fundamental principle behind libertarianism. For example, a consistent libertarian will be the same thing as an anarcho-capitalist will be the same thing. There's another term called voluntarist. Now we're, I mean, we're just adding all the syllables we have to <laughs> add to differentiate ourselves, but to also communicate the idea voluntary ist. We want everything in your life to be voluntary. So all these terms stand for and mean the same thing. The core principle, you own yourself, you have the sovereign right to control yourself and no one right. should rule over you. So we already have the problem of anarchy being, you know, most people assuming chaos and mayhem and like having to, it literally means no rulers. We also have a separate term, uh, we, a separate problem with the term capitalism. Yes. Because so many people, particularly the, the political left, describes corporal fascism as capitalism. And that's not what the word means. The word Preach literally it. means ownership and trade without government interference. <laughs> nothing like what we have now. We do not have capitalism now in the US, nothing remotely close, but that gets labeled as capitalism. And then people go, oh, I don't like that. Well, yeah, I don't like it either. Like actual anarcho-capitalists don't like it because that's big businesses using the violence of government, whether it's just to steal you know, territory and resources outright or to squash their competition or to have all these regulations that makes it impossible for this company to compete with that or limits what people can do. And that, that isn't capitalism at all. But once again, a word has been completely butchered to the point that to, and, and I admit, I don't, I don't usually use the term anarcho-capitalist even though I am one, um, just because of the baggage of having to explain what capitalist means. And what it literally means is you own the fruits of your labor. It kind of just boils down to that. If you work, if you create something, if you work for something, if you trade your labor for money and somebody else pays you, you own a thing. Like you get paid and you can buy a thing and you can trade and then you own that other thing. And you can own a car and you can own a house and you can own a whole business and you can arrange things and, and get evil rich without actually being evil. You can just be rich and be good because you got there by way of voluntary exchange. But these days, again, the, the political left so much paints a picture where if you're successful, you're automatically evil. You must have exploited and harmed other people. Where if you got rich by way of voluntary trade, you had to create something that all those people voluntarily wanted to buy, which means they're all there with the thing going, yeah, this is what I wanted to buy. Now I have one. And somewhere there can be a guy who has millions of dollars for selling them. He's not some evil villain for having provided things that people wanted to buy. That's a good thing. <laughs> like he was a positive, you know, an overall benefit to society. But now you get this thing that, oh, the rich are automatically evil. No, I mean, some of them are because they use the violence of the state. And that's what so many people think of as, as capitalism. And it's because government has its tentacles in everything pointing at today's system and thinking that's capitalism. Well, no wonder people hate it. I hate it too. It's <laughs> just not what capitalism actually means. Um, so there's another term that we have to fight over. And that, that's one of the reasons I, I like the term voluntarist, just because I don't have to fight over what capitalism means. Um, but, but I am an anarcho-capitalist. It's just, I, I'm slightly annoyed by having to give a half hour explanation every time of no, that yeah. corporal fascism the not what I'm in favor of. It's not what any anarcho-capitalist is in favor of. Yeah. So like if I am in the mood to fight over words, I would declare myself an anarchist because all these other words mean the same thing. And anybody that disagrees mm -hmm. with these other words, probably not a consistent anarchist. When I'm not in right. the mood to fight over words, I go with voluntarist because 
Mm-hmm. It's a new word, and people respond with curiosity rather than preconceived notions of Molotovs in the streets. So <laughs> maybe we can just do touch touch on that one more one more time. Why are groups of people like Antifa out there in the streets destroying things uh, not anarchists? Well, I, it's funny because sometimes they just openly openly show their hand like often they'll say we need more welfare benefits and more government handouts and uh, wait what <laughs> you want government to have more power and give stuff more stuff away while pretending you're an anarchist like an anarchist wants government to not exist and th- that's all like that's what being an anarchist means um on top of that they're even if they don't want a ruling class like so maybe technically they're anarchists if you're running around breaking people's stuff and burning down their shops because you're mad at some other person who had nothing to do with them anyway you're a vandalist immoral jackass and you're definitely not a voluntarist because to violate somebody else's property or you know person is the thing you're not allowed to do (laughs) be a voluntarist because that's not voluntary And so, and most of the time, what they're demanding, when you can even tell what they're demanding other than just breaking stuff, has more to do with, we want government to do more of this and that and the other thing, instead of just like, we want government to not exist. And sometimes they're completely blatant in their, in their message and they demonstrate they're just, they're all the way communists. They just want a different flavor of authoritarian collectivism than what we have now. And unfortunately, history will show you lots of victims of authoritarian injustice would love the chance to be the next authoritarian power that victimizes someone else. Like being a victim doesn't mean you're virtuous. It just means you're unlucky. Being virtuous means I don't want to be victimized and I don't want anyone else to be victimized. And that is being a voluntarist, wanting the government to, no, give us more free stuff instead of giving corporations free stuff. Now you're just bickering over stolen loot. That's not a principle. That's not anarchist. That's not moral. It's not voluntarism. It's not anything. You're just a whiny brat who wants some free stolen loot Mm. and trying to pretend that's a philosophy. Yeah, (laughs) maybe a little harsh. (laughs) <laughs> just to re- <laughs> just to restate it's not a consistent philosophy we can say that uh there's plenty right. of inconsistent ones just to just to put like a summary of it so when the government um, points a gun at you and says give me your tax money or else we'll cage you and if you resist we'll murder you they are being your ruler by controlling you against your consent or by threatening you or harming you or even abducting you your person property and throwing it in a cage they are ruling you and your property. The same thing on the street with uh, one of these commies. If they surround your car uh, and prevent you from leaving, they are effectively jailing you. If they destroy your your house or your business or your property uh, in one of their riots, they are de facto attempting to be your ruler in those situations when it comes to that property, which is an antithesis of their stated name. So there is no more clearer example than just pointing to those actions where they are making themselves other people's rulers and also trying to tell you that they want no rulers. It's obvious nonsense. Right. Um, and the, the, another thing I wanted to talk about was what happens now is when we criticize these commies, which are clearly left leaning, they say, okay, well, you're just the right flavor of their left anarchism. Okay. And I want to say again, no, it's not a left and right thing. There is one thing. It's really simple. It goes back to what we said a minute ago. It's not complicated. It's not left, right, up, down, sideways. It's not a spectrum. It's an on or off switch. It's so simple. Anarchism, no rulers. Uh, And and, and go ahead. (laughs) And I actually know it's interesting because... You know, I was I was raised sort of, you know, conservative and, and libertarian leaning and constitutionalist and yada, yada, yada. That was the flavor of statism that I grew up with. I now know thousands of anarchists who came from that side and that general culture and stuff 
and they still have a lot of their their same values and their priorities they just no longer advocate that government use violence against people and i know thousands of people who used to be socialists or democrats and you know it can be the 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 hippies who want to you know garden and you know whatever live however they want and they still have the same values and they still have you know a lot of the same preferences and lifestyles they just figured out yeah i don't want government initiating violence either so it's not like well you have to give up who you are and become a part of this cult it's literally you can be exactly who you are just please stop cheering for violent aggression like and that's all that's the only thing we ask that you change you can and i get along fine with people i would have been arch enemies with back when we were both statists leftist statists and rightist statists sit there and scream at each other and they think no my ideas should be forced on everybody by way of government no my ideas should be forced on everybody by way of government and they don't realize that the existence of politics is the only reason they can't peacefully coexist because otherwise it's just oh well you live your life the way you want you support the causes you want and i'll live my life the way i want and we have no reason to be at war so people have this weird notion because they were indoctrinated into it that well, we need a government because it helps us get along. It literally does the exact opposite. It pits us against each other and creates conflict where there doesn't need to be conflict. I run my life, you run your life. If neither of us uses violence against each other, like, where's the problem? Like, even if we don't like each other, we can like each other, we can dislike each other, who cares? Like, we just refrain from violence against each other and then it's fine. And then government comes along and says, no, vote for me. And I'll take all your preferences, all your interests, all the things that you care about and force everybody else to pay for it. And then they go to the other people and say the same thing. And then the left and right are screaming at each other. And it's so ingrained in people's thoughts that when you criticize the, the political parasites that they're cheering for, they assume you must be cheering for the other political parasites. Yep. So the left constantly thinks oh you're a trump supporter you have way more in common with trump supporters than i do and then the republicans are like, oh you're bashing our guy you must be a liberal no you have way more in common with the liberals than i do because both of you have accepted the notion that we need a big ruling class that robs everybody and controls them and tries to make them all behave within like similar guidelines i want all of both of you to be free so yeah, you two are pretty much on the same side. You're just bickering about the details of the authoritarian violence. I don't want any authoritarian violence. Yeah, every every four years, I magically somehow switch sides in everybody in in the general public's <laughs> mind. It's like when when uh, Trump was in office and I was criticizing the ways the government was violently controlling people. Uh, they'd be like, "Oh, you friggin' libtard!" Blah blah blah. <laughs> and then now, magically, Biden gets in office, and and I criticize him, and they're all like, "Oh, you magatard!" Blah. It's like y'all are all stuck in this stupid game, and you don't even know. Like one side wants to steal from the other to fund war, and the other side wants to steal from the their neighbors to to fund welfare or whatever. It's like, and, and we're over here, like, stop stealing, stop it. Le- you know, let's can't we just. And we're the- Extremists. <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, we're extremists. We're saying, how about not stealing? Oh, what's yeah. wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, and people are like, oh, your ideology is uh, is is it's extreme and insane and utopian, and I'm like, wait, wait, we 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 just want you to not steal from people. Uh, is that so hard? Is that so complicated? Oh, oh man. Okay, uh, so and the only reason. It- the only reason that ridiculous spectacle happens is because people have been trained into this their entire lives and and one thing that that occurred to me when you were talking before is a lot of people when you say government is a ruling class they'll say no we vote for it and we have a constitution there are elections and there are all these weird rituals that happen and that means we're in charge and a thing that americans really don't like it when i point this out to them i mean that the flag waving nationalistic type you want um is that democracy was the most brilliant trick the tyrants ever came up with because if a tyrant comes along and says i'm going to rule you because i can do what i do what i say or i stomp on you people say we don't like you we're going to resist but if tyrant comes along and says i'm going to let you choose between these two people 
who will boss you around and take your stuff. And that means you're in charge. You're making the choice. And that means that you consent to whatever happens afterwards. So you just have to pick one, pick one of these. And, and even when the spectacle is Hillary versus Trump and then Trump versus Biden, people are still playing that. Like, doesn't it occur to people? How could these be the choices? <laughs> but for, for Americans who think that, well, they're not a ruling class because we can vote for them. First of all, sit down, take a deep breath before you do what I'm about to suggest, because it's going to be traumatic. Look up the constitutions of the Soviet Union and Red China and North Korea. Yes, they have constitutions. Yeah, they're all allowed to vote. They're all constitutional republics, just like the U.S. They allow their people to vote, just like the U.S. They have an individual bill of rights, just like the U.S. The worst tyrannies in the history of the world were democratically elected constitutional republics with a bill of rights all of those and the weimar republic which became nazi germany same thing look up those constitutions you've been taught that the constitution means we're really in charge and it's a servant government and blah 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 blah, blah. they taught the same garbage to the russians before stomping on them they taught the same garbage to the chinese before stomping on them Taught the same garbage to the Germans for stomping on them. It's the same lie. And it's so effective because if you can get people tricked into thinking they agreed to it somehow, somehow you agreed to this. Well, I mean, this is this is how our system works. And we have a constitution. We have elections and you're allowed to vote and stuff. Therefore, you have to put up with whatever happens after that. And your only recourse is to whine about it for four years and then try again and then whine about it for another four years and then try again and then whine about it until <laughs> you're dead and then your children can whine about it for another four years and so on and so forth or you can say we didn't consent to any of this we didn't agree to this system this wasn't our idea nobody has the right to rule us and uh, as Patrick and I can tell you, it's sort of a weird process your brain goes through when you realize how utterly insane the normal belief system is. Because when you escape it and look back on it, you're like, why did I ever think that these weird rituals and documents actually gave other human beings the right to boss me around and cage me if I disobey and steal my money for things I don't like? Why did I ever think that was okay? And it's literally just indoctrination. So to me, the funniest thing is if people think of anarchism as a cult, when it's literally the description of the people who got out of the cult. <laughs> Statism is the cult. And we're yeah. the ones who figured out something's wrong. And so to view us as the cult, when we're the cult of run your own life and don't hurt other people. Ooh, that's so we're the We're the cult of consent and self-ownership. <laughs> It's, it's so insane. Like that, that's all you can, you have the ability to withdraw your consent to be controlled at any time individually without having to leave this plantation to go for another, you own yourself, you, everything in your life needs to be voluntary. Um, okay. So if you're finding sure. this channel and you have questions or challenges or thoughts, leave them in the comments. And the next time we do one of these shows, We'll get to your comments and we'll talk about them. Why don't we leave it here like this? Um, Larkin, I'll hand it to you first. If you could, let's do like a, here's some other resources for you to learn more. Um, what, what types of things should people go looking for? And then finally, like, where can they find more of your work, Larkin? And then I'll do kind of the same thing with my recommendations. There, there's so much stuff out there for people who want to learn more about it. The first steps are usually the weirdest for somebody because starting to question something that almost everybody around you has religiously believed your whole life, including you, is awkward and uncomfortable, even if it's something pretty simple and obvious. Um, I have my book, The Most Dangerous Superstition, as, as the thing, if you really want a thorough understanding of it, but if you're just getting into it, um, I mean, you, the, there's the Disenthrall channel, there's Anarchast, there's my channel on YouTube. There's a gazillion videos about like everything you could think of. Whoa, what about this? And what about that? And what about the other thing? Um, you just stole of all the, of the ones I was going to say. 
Yeah, see, the devil. <laughs> what I would suggest in between reading whatever you read, looking up whatever you look up, take a deep breath and pause and dare to distinguish in your own head the difference between the parts that are really you, what you really believe in. Because I'm assuming, without even knowing you, that most of the people we're talking to, you really believe in peaceful coexistence. You don't want your neighbors attacking you. You don't want to attack them. You want to get along, right? Doesn't mean everybody's going to. Some people might be nasty. But when you're reading about voluntarism and, and learning about these things, beware of the things that are, are not you. They were things you were taught to believe. You were taught to accept them on faith and repeat them religiously. And then there's the real you. And here's the weird part. Like, we're not trying to be your new rulers. We want you to rule yourself, which sounds a little bit schizophrenic. We want you to run your own life. I'll put it that way. We want that without even knowing you. So look into you and see which parts of this belief system are really you, what you really instinctively understand is how people should be and which part is just stuff you were taught along the way about democracy and law enforcement and crime and, and authority and all sorts of stuff. And be ready for the uncomfortable process of letting go of things that were never you. They were just crap you were taught. I, I don't know you and I trust the real you way more than I trust the status crap you were taught. So be ready for the uncomfortable process of letting go of stuff that isn't really you. It's just garbage that you were taught along the way. And so was I and so was Patrick. And we were, we were all taught the same garbage to be who you really are. Because that's, that, that's what this crazy cult wants is for you to be who you really are and be in charge of your own life. I know that's extreme and dangerous, but it's a cult. That's man. what it is. That's a cult. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I'll try not to repeat too many of the things you just said, but I swear you said so much. I was about to say, I was going to go on a rant about the word we as, as like this start as, as a status Patrick, as a normal status status is just somebody that thinks the government should exist and control people. Right. So most normal people are status. Um, that's, an insult if you know once you realize it is <laughs> but until then it's just a description of everyone that, that's alive except for anarchists um you'll you'll hear this word and as soon as you start paying attention it's like when you start shopping for a new car and you have your eye on one it's like oh i really like those i don't know jeep wranglers as soon as you start thinking about buying a Jeep Wrangler, suddenly you see them all around you, uh, everywhere on the road. Like there's a thousand Jeep Wranglers now, just because you've, you're paying attention, start paying attention to the word we and how people use the word we just in everyday discourse and how they are almost never actually part of the group of people in that we. So they'll say we're in the middle East. No, you're not. <laughs> you're, I'm not. You're, never, you're never in the Middle East. Uh, or they'll say, you know, we're funding the war in Iraq, let's say. No, no, no you're, you're being stolen from and some other people are funding the war in Iraq. <laughs> or the, the point is to start thinking of yourself in terms of an individual and start thinking and speaking of yourselves in terms of an individual instead of the collective. And I'm really speaking to the people on the right now. That was my background, too, so I can kind of speak their language. Anytime you use that, we, anytime you wave that flag, you are collectivizing yourself into a group of people and the group of people that you're collectivizing, collectivizing yourself into is doing a lot of stuff that you probably don't consent to. So just for a moment, look for that word. We, and like Larkin was saying, do you really want to be a part of it? Each time you hear that word we used because other people will use it at you. They'll be like, well, you know, we need to help the poor. Like, hold on, <laughs> I help the poor uh, in my own way. We have an event that we do every every year here in Dallas where we, we go and help the homeless people. That's a we that I'm a part of, a, a small group of people that actually do something effective. I, I'm, not, I, I'm not in favor of a large, massive, forced, non-consensual, um, you know, throw you in a cage if you don't want to, you know, pay your taxes or whatever to pay for it. A thing that is welfare anyway so that that was kind of my my tip that folded into what larkin was saying resources uh lysander spooner wrote a book lysander l-y-s-a-n-d-e-r lysander spooner 
the con- uh, No Treason, The Constitution of No Authority. You have to read this book. It was written a- around the time of the Civil War as slavery was coming to an end. This was an abolitionist, somebody fighting to end slavery, wrote an amazing book. He was a lawyer. He was the first person to try to compete with the United States Postal Service, and he did so well that they made a law to make it illegal to compete with them and shut him down. He is a badass baller. It's not a long book. Uh, and if you want the audio book, I read the entire thing on my channel, Disenthrall, which is where I'll also send you guys if you want the more philosophical side or the more activist side of things, Disenthrall, D-I-S-E-N-T-H-R-A-L-L dot me is our website. You can find all of our platforms there. Uh, Larkin has the rosechannel.com where he has uh, a lot of good resources there. What was your other website? You have a new one, right? Uh, 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 well, there's the candles in the dark one, which is attend candles, but that's mostly for people who are already voluntarists. That's true. That's true. Um, okay. And then, uh, if you want to find out more about the charity work that we do, voluntaryvirtue.org is the website for that. And then finally, for the people that really need to hear it in words that they're used to hearing since birth, I would recommend that everybody read the declaration of individual independence. Larkin actually helped us do a reading of that. Uh, in a video a while back, you can find the text version at notgovernor.com. It's a, there's a button at the top. You can go straight to the document of it. But what it is, is it's the Declaration of Independence, but with the collectivism removed. And it talks and it speaks in terms of you, the individual, and your individual consent to, to be free. Uh, it's a very powerful document. If you want the video version, it's here on this channel, Declaration of Individual Independence. You can find that. So... Those are my recommendations. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. See you next time.